EB virus is a common pathogen that infects most people. Most EB virus infections are asymptomatic and they are never perceived. But in some rare cases, the EB virus infects T cells and NK cells developing into a chronic active Epstein-Barr virus infection, or CAEBV. Dr. Ayako Arai is trying to elucidate the pathology of CAEBV and develop a treatment for it. The T cells and NK cells infected by the EB virus become activated and they proliferate, causing a serious disease. Once a patient develops CAEBV, the person suffers chronic inflammation. The infected cells develop into tumors causing lymphoma and leukemia, leading to life-threatening events such as multiple organ failure and disturbed consciousness. This disease is very rare, and only 30 cases are reported every year as newly diagnosed cases in Japan. Insurance coverage for DNA quantitative tests to detect the disease only became available recently. Ms. Okunaka was diagnosed with CAEBV 10 years ago when she visited several medical institutions to find out the cause of a high fever that lasted for more than two weeks. I felt relieved when the fever came down, but the lab test results showed poor performance in my hepatic functions. The doctors were wondering why the values for my hepatic functions were so high, because no specific drugs were being administered. CAEBV was not known back then, so they wondered what was causing the abnormal condition. The university hospital doctors said that they had never treated CAEBV. An effective treatment has not yet been developed. The only solution for the time being is HSC, or hematopoietic stem cell transplantation. However, the treatment requires a challenging procedure, and there are not enough donors who have the matching HLA to ensure success. The probability of finding a match between the HLA type of a donor and the recipient is one out of several hundred to tens of thousands. In my case, my younger brother's HLA type matched mine, so I received a transplantation from him. My case was exceptional in that they transplanted the bone marrow from my brother, who was very young at that time. My condition was very serious, so they had no other choice. I could not sit up straight because I felt nauseous and lethargic after the transplantation. I also suffered from stomatitis. I could not eat for three weeks. I survived on intravenous feeding. Dr. Arai discovered while studying the cause of the disease that a specific protein among all the infected cells is activated. She realized that inactivating the protein could provide clues on how to treat and improve the symptoms. An investigator-initiated study led by Dr. Arai to confirm the efficacy of JAK-1-2 inhibitor ruxolitinib, a molecular targeted agent that initiates protein STAT-3, is ongoing. The duration of hospitalization, according to protocol, is set after listening to the patient's wishes. Utmost attention is paid to safety. As CAEBV is said to be a rare disease often found in Asia, the pharmaceutical industry and global initiatives have invested little effort into addressing the issue. Dr. Adai's research is being supported by the AMED project, as well as by citizens' groups, including patients. One such example is Sankyu Miu, a project named after Ms. Miyu Matsuki, a voice actor who died of CAEBV. She wanted more people to learn about the disease and strive to raise social awareness for it before she passed away. Research funding donated by the Sankyu Miyu project helped Dr. Adai identify one of the causes of CAEBV in her research. Dr. Arai and other researchers have been trying to make progress in their research by incorporating the knowledge of patients and citizens. 
The patients are highly motivated to support the research, and so they let us use clinical samples such as blood and bone marrow. Such samples can be used in basic research and are very helpful in identifying the candidates for therapeutic agents. In that sense, this is research conducted by the patients. I meet the patients regularly at meetings hosted by patient advocacy groups and report the findings of our research. We constantly exchange information as I feel we are a team working hand in hand. As it is a rare and intractable disease, the support from patients and citizens is a huge factor in driving the research forward. Patients, citizens, and researchers working together beyond mere collaboration is a new model for medical research and development. AMED's program, Practical Research Project for Rare Intractable Diseases, aims to overcome intractable diseases by promoting research on rare and intractable diseases. There is an emphasis on promptly feeding back the findings to society. AMED also promotes patient and public involvement, PPI, initiatives in medical research and clinical trials. As part of PPI initiatives, it is hoped that the promoting of interaction between researchers, patients, and citizens will lead to the attaining of more meaningful research results, ensure the smooth running of medical research and clinical trials, and bolster subject protection. While working closely with each patient, AMED strives to realize practical applications for research findings for immediate delivery to patients and their families.